hi everyone here we are going to discuss the subject wise test paper of orthopedics for this session 2021 and i hope that most of these questions were not that difficult some of them some similar to one liners where you know the answer some were you know trying to test your patients some were trying to test your clinical solving ability like that so let's see what all questions we have got in this fwt the first one a 25 year old male on entry retroviral therapy and steroids has pain in the right hip joint for three years okay so in the patient, what do we have? We have a patient of 25 years. We have a patient who is on anti-retroviral ARTs for last uh, ART, what he's taking, steroids. And now he's coming to with right hip pain for how long? Three years. So it tells me that it's not an acute case, number one. The pain has not started acutely. That means trauma is usually ruled out. Second, it has something to go uh, got with the steroids, which are doing something wrong with the hip joint. He has difficulty in movement at the hip and almost all the movements are painful and restricted. So it is not like that he is keeping the hip only in one direction. It is all the movements which are getting restricted. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So we have a global restriction of movement. We have a young male without trauma, steroids, right hip pain. What most likely? Now when you talk about the septic arthritis, you know that in septic arthritis, the attitude of the hip usually is flexion, abduction, external rotation because that is the stage of Sinovitis and sinovitis for any disorder, whether it is tuberculosis, whether it is septic arthritis, for this disease, sinovitis all the time will have the same attitude, right? But here, and then you have the restriction. Obviously, if in sinovitis the patient comes with abduction, external rotation, then obviously opposite movement will be handled. It will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, it it should be restricted. Osteoarthritis, why it cannot be the reason? Because the age is just twenty five. And we are not having any other reason like any other trauma or any other elderly age group like factor which which may suggest that there is osteoarthritis. And that too, osteoarthritis, if it is an age related process, for example, if it is in, you know, like 40 years, 50 years, why it should be only confined to the one right hip joint? If it is a, something uh, got wrong, only traumatic will have a single joint involvement. If it is a systemic involvement, it should have a bilateral involvement. So that is also less likely possibility. Avian is one possibility we can think of. Why? What are the points favoring it? Young age group, steroids, single hip pain, and that too for a long duration. So that is something which catches our, you know, uh, attention. And that is most likely the problem. And tubercular arthritis, again, why tubercular arthritis, you know that there are four stages. First stage will pass like synovitis, flexion, abduction, external rotation. And then there will be other stage in which the hip is in flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. So whenever hip is in this attitude or this attitude, the opposite movements will be restricted. But here what we are talking about is that all the movements are painful and restricted. So here the most likely cause will be avascular necrosis. A patient who has recalcitrant medial plantar heel pain and pain directly over the medial side of the heel undergoes open release of the plantar fascia. So we are dealing with a regional condition where there is a plantar fascia which is causing some problem to the heel area. And then there is a medial side, medial side plantar heel pain. That means the pain is on the heel on which side more side the medial side when you open the plantar fascia to release the structure the pain is gone after releasing a portion of plantar fascia the deep fascia of the abductor hallucis muscle is released to relieve pressure on which of the following structure basically what is the source of the pain on the medial side now if i just talk about the medial side understand what all we have this is the tendon see this this one this belly is the tendon of the abductor hallucis muscle which is going hallucis to the great toe when I cut it, you can see these bunch of nerves here, right? So what are these nerves? I've all more simplified them. Medial plantar and the lateral plantar, both the nerves are on the medial side, basically. And then they remain, medial one remain confined to the medial side. Later one, you can see it is going like this, to the little uh, side to the little toe, the one and a half toes, basically. So even if instead of having an option of the lateral plantar nerve, even if they have the option of medial plantar nerve, that also you can select. So it's not like that it is on lateral plantar, so it will be getting compressed on lateral side. No, it is under the medial side, the muscle, this abductor hallucis muscle only. So when we cut the abductor hallucis muscle, these two nerves which are getting compressed over here, these will get relieved. Right? So remember this please. Third question, a three month old girl baby is brought to the OPD by its mother with complaint of a clicking sound originating from the hip region of the baby. Okay. So what patient do we have here? A three month old child brought by mother. Complain of clicking sound from the hip joint. These are the complaints of the patient. On examination, it was found that autolytic test is positive and X-ray shows DDH. So they have already given you the diagnosis that now the patient is a DDH or CDH or what you want to call it. And here, the autolony test is positive. What does that mean? Autolony. Autolony positive means 
the hip was probably already dislocated that you have tried to reduce. So, what we do not only we reduce the hip joint that we have done. Okay. X-ray showed this uh, DDH. What is the next line in the management? Now, what to do? You have already diagnosed it. What is the next line in management? Should we give her his pica? Should we go for open reduction? Should we go for closed reduction and pelvic harness and application of pelvic harness? Now, understand autolony test is positive means you have already reduced the hip joint. Now, you have already reduced. So, what we do? Autolony test is positive. You have reduced. So, what we are going to do is we will just do the closed reduction. Right, we will be uh, you know trying to reduce it and then we'll apply a pelvic harness. That is the treatment of any three month old child, right? The simple child. So, remember the treatment plan DDH has been a question of your recent MCQ exam also, where they asked that how you want to surgically you know operate on this patient. So, remember this please. Whenever you want to operate, what will be the step? Cutting the skin, cutting the fascia, splitting the muscle, cutting the hip joint capsule, identifying the hip joint. And then after identifying hip joint, try to reduce the femoral head and into the acetabulum if required derotational osteotomy and then closer. That's what we do in CDH. Okay. So do remember application of pelvic harness you can do or a close reduction and pelvic harness. So basically option A or D more or less seems, you know, to be same. But here autolony test is positive. That means you have already reduced it. So close reduction is required. Close reduction is required. You'll reduce it and you'll apply the pelvic harness as simple as that. A 65 year old patient known asthmatic on regular steroid from some local practitioner present in ortho OPD. Okay. So now what we have, we have a 65 year old lady known case of asthma on uh, again taking steroids from some local practitioner presented in ortho OPD with complaint of backache. Okay. So backache, lower dorsal, upper lumbar region, which of the given following statement is false in relation to the disease of the patient. So what disease probably she might be suffering. So we have a elderly female around 65 years. And this elderly female is also taking steroids. Okay, so they have not mentioned female. I have myself taken female. Apology for that. So 65 year old patient, steroids and there is backache and so on. So we know that it is a, you know, elderly age group. And for elderly age group, what is a common condition which can affect the patients, male or female, more common obviously in female postmenopausal status, so osteoporosis. And we know that the steroids can also induce osteoporosis. So what is wrong in relation to that? Vertebra, hip and distal radius are common site involved. Absolutely right. Serum mineral will be reduced in this patient. In osteoporosis, is it reduced? No, that is absolutely wrong. Codfish appearance can be seen. Absolutely right again. And most common presenting complaint is pain. Yes. And what site? What are the common sites? So, vertebra, it is already mentioned in the question. Vertebra, then we have the hip, groin area, neck of femur area. And then we have the distal radial area where the patient can have commonly coles fracture. So, distal radius or the coli structure. So, common side. Okay. Next one, a five, a six year old child came to the emergency department with fall on outstretched elbow and x-ray was done. All are complications seen with this fracture except. Okay. So, what do you observe? Proximal part, distal part, supracondylar fracture, elbow joint here, ulna here, radius here. Right. So, case of fracture supracondylar. So, what they are asking is all are complications seen with this fracture except. Which one is not a fracture of supracondylar? So, when we talk about the fracture supracondylar, we know that there can be immediate complication, which can be a neurovascular injury. So, in neurovascular, we know that the nerve commonly involved are AMRU, isn't it? Entry interosseous nerve, median nerve, radial nerve and ulnar nerve in the sequence. And then vessel, you know, there is only one big vessel that is brachial artery. So, neurovascular compromise can be there, which is not an option here. Then there can be increase in the pressure around the muscle, causing a loss of blood supply to the muscle. That's what we call as Walkman's ischemia. So, that ischemia is definitely mentioned over here. No, that is also not here. So, this Walkman's ischemia, if it continues, it can land up the muscle, go into compartment syndrome. That is quite a possibility. If this compartment syndrome continues, it can cause a permanent damage to the soft tissues. That's what you call Walkman's ischemic contracture, right? And then, when you talk about the most common complication related to it, supracondylar, it is a malunion leading to gunstock deformity. And one of the most common complication which is seen around elbow most often is myositis that is more of a bone formation myositis ossificans what is not usually seen is a non-union non-union is the least likely complication or not seen complication around the supracondylus because it's a metaphysal area it's a metaphysal injury and being highly vascular area usually the metaphysal fractures they usually unite like coles like this one they usually unite okay so non-union is not the complication